Recording now. Okay. All right, so this is a, a good follow-up um, to Tina's, because uh, I also did music in the classroom as well. Um, and so I, I found a lot of resources online. There are a lot of great resources. Uh, there were some people that I found that had written some articles, and then I followed them on Twitter. And then there were a couple of books that I found that helped just establish a couple of guidelines for how to use music effectively in the classroom. Uh, one of the best ways is when students are first walking into class, and you can set a really kind of fun and upbeat, positive mood. You also have a lot of freedom with the type of music that, that you play when they're coming into class. Um, I have an example of some of the playlists that I use. Um, some music that I'm into that's just kind of fun, and I know some that the kids are into. Bob Marley is always very, very good when they're coming in. Um, and then, yeah, a lot of current music, things that kind of pump them up when they come into class. But the, the thing that you want to keep in mind if you are going to start using music is that when you're using feel-good music and things that they're coming into, it's pretty wide open. You can use music with lyrics or whatever. But when you're using background music, you really don't want to have lyrics because it can be distracting. And when they're reading or they're working in small groups or working independently, instrumental music um, I found has been a lot more helpful. And also the volume at which you play it is really important. It can't be too loud. If it's too soft, then they won't even hear it. But you play around with it and you kind of find the right level. And it actually helps kind of smooth over some of the distractions as far as kids shifting in their seats, clearing their throats, blowing their nose, the AC unit kicking on and off. It helps kind of cover that up. And I found that it's actually less distracting in that way. Um, so some examples of background music, um, I like to use jazz sometimes, it creates that kind of coffee house vibe. Um, some classical music, I'll talk about that a little bit more later, and then also some acoustic instrumental music. Um, and I have a few uh, different playlists that I also tweeted out, and I'll talk a little bit about what I did with that. Uh, this would be cool if you could actually hear it, um, but there's a uh, piece of Baroque music that's playing in the background while the kids are working. It would also be cool if it actually played when I hit it. But <laughs> we're going to pretend that there's this awesome clip of the kids working and Baroque music playing in the background. It was great. Cool. She can verify. <laughs> um, so a lot of tools that you can use. Um, my favorite is Spotify because it's free. Um, second reason it's free. And the third reason, also free. And I played a lot of, um, I, you can create playlists on it, which is awesome. And the other thing that's cool about that is if you make a playlist, you can actually share that playlist. So you can tweet it out, which is what I did a lot. I would create a playlist, I would tweet it out, and then the tweet embeds um, a link for you to take a look at what that <laughs> is. So I have my jazz list, and the Baroque list, and the acoustic background, and feel good music. And it's all organized really nicely. Um, and you don't have to start that or stop there with you know coming in class or background music. You can incorporate it into lessons. Um, so one of the things that I did, or what I'm what I'm going to do, um, is with Romeo and Juliet. At the end of that, we're going to have their culminating assignment, which is to create a soundtrack for the play. And they're going to be choosing songs for specific scenes, and they have to connect the themes from the song that they choose to the themes of that specific scene and explain how they tie into the motifs that we're studying for that play. Uh, so it's kind of a fun way for them to communicate their understanding of those themes and motifs through the music that they already listen to. Um, and then one of the things that I tried when we were doing To Kill a Mockingbird, which I really liked, was taking this song by Billie Holiday called Strange Fruit. And it's this really kind of dark song about lynchings in the South at the time that the book took place. And so I had them take a look at the lyrics, they listened to the song, listened to the song a couple of times, and then after going through it, they annotated these lyrics, kind of, and drew some images that they saw, and then went through an analysis using the song. So it was a really kind of cool way to incorporate music into the lesson, not just as background music. Um, so again, you know, obviously music is a big part of our everyday life, and if you can use it to engage students in the learning process, it's just one more tool that really kind of helps build that community and, you know, positive.
positive learning environment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.